Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. <laughs> I can't remember. Drawer making episode 19. 19, maybe. So this is the one where I'm redoing the drawers. But uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, we're just going to do little quick bits here and there. I want to go, as I do this, I want to just film areas that you really need to pay attention to so we can avoid that error. I can avoid that error. Well, but before we get to do that, I want to show you this. We're going to do this chest of drawers. Showed you that one yesterday. And that one is more utilitarian. This one, I kind of bumped it up to uh, what we call a cabinet grade, which is kind of crazy to have like this type of work in a shop. But I managed to keep it without too many dings this long. So this one, there's no detectable side-to-side -side movement in any of the drawers. And that's the way it should be. Up and down. Just enough to allow for seasonal movement. Now, what you try to do is get that gap to be the same if you look at it all the way down. So we'll take some, one of these out and I'll show you some of the other stuff I did. Which one's going to be easiest to empty? That'll be this one. Now, what I haven't done yet, and I'm going to, is I've got to go in and put in a drawer stop because I've already had somebody come in one time and pull it out. And the whole thing ended up on the floor. Now, this was going to be used, or these are going to get used a whole lot more. So I put kind of a modified um, drawer slip on there. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about this. So for the case, it's MDF banded with bird's eye maple on the front. The dividers are uh, 5 8 I'm sorry, half inch. Baltic birds plywood, so I'll take another drawer out just so that you can see. And some of these are heavy. So that was that's sitting in a dado all the way back, and then there's a plywood back on there. And the plywood doesn't have a whole lot of strength. I I was trying to economize on my materials, and that's the reason why. No, actually that's not true either. What I wanted, I wanted, I wanted the runners to run with the grain as opposed to across the grain. Don't ask me why. So, because of that, and I was running out of material because I look over here and I did it the opposite down on this one. But all of the weight is carried right over here, so I have no worries about this sagging in the middle. All right, so let's take a look at the drawer. It's aspen on the sides, mahogany or something like mahogany in the front. Aspen on the back, Baltic birch ply on the bottom, and then I included these drawer slips. So what this does is increases the running surface to uh, improve or reduce, I guess you would say, the wear over time. If you've ever looked at a pair, uh, an antique chest of drawers that was well made enough to last to be an antique, you'll always see that the uh, drawer drawers have run right down into whatever the dividers were, and it actually causes the drawers to sag, and that's just wear over time. So instead of having three-eighths of an inch, I've got three-quarters of an inch running on that surface. So theoretically, that'll last twice as long. Uh, sitting in the groove, actually the groove is on, the groove is in the drawer slip, and the drawer slip was added after the fact, and then I had to fit it in there, so the drawer slip runs it actually has a little tongue that goes into this groove that is cut in the drawer front and then it's notched right here. So the drawer slip itself is, uh, I'll try to give you some idea. Shoot, I don't have my measuring tape. The drawer slip is probably, yeah, it's be more than three quarters of an inch. Yeah, it's three quarters of an inch wide. So it's notched up here. So this piece fits into the groove that I cut for the drawer bottom. And then back here, it's notched right here. And then comes out and then lays underneath the drawer back. And the groove that holds the drawer bottom is actually cut into the slip. So it's, there's nothing actually cut into the aspen side. And it just, it just kind of looks, I, normally you'd have it the same color as the drawer side, but I just thought I'd make a feature of it. So I made it the same color as the, uh, made the mahogany the same as the drawer front. Dovetails, uh, nothing particular about them. 
I, uh, the whole design of this is to have the, the tails come through on the front and kind of be a, a feature. So on the uh, pullouts, which are same, same combination of woods, you see them here. And then this is the uh, prototype, remember. So all of these, all of these little uh, drawers along the side will all be dovetailed and you'll see all those that look kind of nice because all the drawer fronts will be mahogany. All the drawer sides will be aspen, so you'll see the tails coming out there. Same on both sides. And uh, up there as well, so there'll be a ton of dovetails. Maybe too many. Now, as I said, I, the only thing lacking on this is I don't have drawer stops. But I'm going to do the same thing I did on some of the other ones I showed you, where we'll drill a hole here, and we'll put a dowel in with a washer on the top for weight to keep it down. And that'll prevent these things from getting pulled out too far. Now I'll actually have to set it in here a little bit. Uh, I think that one goes up here. I'll probably set that back in there a little no. ways. Huh? No. Is not this one? No. It is this one? They're numbered. Four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Now I'm really scraping the barrel to find you more drawers. Kind of running out. Okay, let me put this stuff back in and then I'll show you the first couple of little things that I want to uh, remind you of before I continue. Okay, so I just want to hit some of the highlights or things to remember. Did so you here's. Explain to them what went wrong. Oh, we already did. Not a lot of people understood it then. What went wrong? Yeah. Where do I start? <coughs> well, start at the very beginning. Go back over here. Huh? What do you mean? It all started with fitting the drawer signs. It all started in 1961. I was born July 31st. So what went wrong? Um, well, you know, some people think this is what I'm upset about. You see a little bit of a gap right there. It's not very big. I could fix that, anybody could fix that, and you would never see it because it's, it's without, even, without even with glasses on, it just looks like a dark line. You could put a piece of cherry in there, a thin wedge in, all three, and it would just disappear. That doesn't bother me. It bothers me that the marking gauge was set wrong. I don't know how that happened. But the biggest problem was this. I should, when I, f when the other day, when, or yesterday, the back that we fit first, there's the back, and I kept it. I kept it the full height. And because I kept it the full height, when it comes time to referencing, laying out the dovetail, I'll be able to reference off of the bottom. And I didn't do that. Well, when we, when, when no, I couldn't, because I had, I had for some reason, I had it already cut down. When I fit the drawer side, when I fit this one, and then I fit this one, that piece was hanging down in there. So this piece, in order to fit, and you remember too, we had a bit of a belly in there. I had to go in with the shoulder plane and fix it. Because of that, this piece was narrower than this piece. So come over here. I can set this down. I'll show you what I mean. In order to get that perfect fit that I'm aiming for, everything has to be perfectly square. And when I say perfect, I mean as close as you can get it with your eye. So this corner was fine, this corner was fine, that corner was fine. But because we referenced off of the top, uh, this one being taller than that one, so when, it, when this is flush, this one, and this one is flush, if it had been done right, this one would have been higher, this back would have been higher than this side because this side was, lo was narrower than this side. But I didn't do that. I put them in the same spot in relation to the top. And now because of that, if you remember, when I went to assemble that, I knew, I knew, I knew what happened as soon as I saw it. I put this one in. Shame, too, we did all that work on that repair. <laughs> when we put this one in, I came over here, and I had to move it over like that, almost a quarter of an inch, to get that to drop into place. And I knew right then and there that it was over. It was done. You missed it. When this goes together, these two pieces have to be, after you put this one in, you come over here, they have to be perfectly lined up. Then you know you got it right. So that's what happened. So now, 
in order to get this to fit, I thought, I'm sure I went through this the other day. You should explain that you could have referenced off of the top if the sides were the same width. I, I could, I, I already, I had the idea what I was going to do. All I need to do is get a block, put a block in here that would, would have essentially taken up this space and I could have referenced off of there and I would have used the same block over here. And then it didn't matter. See this, as long as this is in the same relation to that as this over here is to that bottom, it doesn't matter if this one's a little bit taller or not. The bottom is your, and I, I harp on this, the bottom is always your standard. That never changes. You don't adjust it after the fact. You, do your, you work off of a straight square bottom and then everything else will work perfectly. So now if I tried to fit this, if I tried to fit this, in keeping, I want, when this close, goes together, I want that to lay in there nice and flat. This surface lays flat against that inside. But in order to do that, it would have this side up too high. You wouldn't be able to fit it in. And if you cut material off the bottom to drop that down, then still, in order to keep it so that there's no side-to-side -side slop, you're still going to have this piece is going to be sticking up in the air, not touching down here on the bottom. So you put any any so it's always going to be wanting to twist down like that. You just you can't fix it. I mean I've seen people's ideas of going in and putting a little wedge in here and whatever, but you cannot get that perfect fit. And uh, you know there's a few comments I read about well why are you worrying about it? Well, <laughs> why am I worrying about it? I got my name on this. And uh, knowing you can do something right and you don't do it, how do you live with yourself? And that's the reason why I never made any money when I was building furniture for a living. Darn near starved to death. So, wrong profession maybe. I tell people, this is a fantastic hobby. Don't try to do it for a living. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, hopefully that got answered, I think. All right, so what we're going to do tonight uh, I've got to. I've got to fit the. I've got to take the back that we've already fit, and I'm not. Wor I, I purposely made this to fit those sides. I don't care if it's turned in a little bit. Once it doesn't matter. Long as the front and the back are the same when this goes in, that nothing changes, and that'll that'll fit in there perfectly. I'll cut this down to size after I've gone in and laid out the front and the drawers, the sides. Then I'll go back in and adjust this to fit. So what we'll do tonight, I'll mill that up, then we'll take this and we'll, we'll cut the back. I'll show you how we do that. But in between now and then, I want to go in and just hit a few highlights. So this is the first one. I'll make these short. So I've, mar I've straightened the bottom, squared it. I've got to plane the inside face, but I ran that right off of the joiner. I'll, I'll we'll come in and plane it. The two bottom edges are straight and square. Now, uh, which one? I, I marked the ends that I already did. So this one, this one facing me, has been uh, has already been cut. So I'm going to hold them like this. You want them to be the exact same length. Again, this is all about. If, you, if one was a little bit longer than the other, when you go to put it together, you're not going to have per four perfectly square corners. Checking the bottom, that's my reference. Making sure they're the same length. Then I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to mark this. And I'll go in and I'll plane that so that these two pieces are, ex are the exact same length. And then I'll go and fit them to width. You, you've seen me do that already. We don't need to repeat that. So when we pick up the camera again, oh, and I'm going to, the other thing too, and I've, I've got to cut the rabbits, I'm going to gang saw these. So I'm going to put the two of them together and do that. So we may show you a little bit of that as well. All right, give me a chance to catch up, then we'll turn the camera back on. I just thought I would turn the camera on for a second just to tell you that I don't mind doing this again because I get to plane this holly, and it is the prettiest. Well, I didn't say pretty. It's just the coolest stuff. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Ahmed down in Southern California that sent this to me. He is a lover of wood. I won't say his last name because everybody would be wanting to get wood from him. 
But when that comes off, it's just one of the nicest woods to plane and feels fantastic. All right, so full wood shaving. Now, just a quick little lesson on this. So you have to address your blade. So if you look at this carefully, see how this has a hard edge? And see how this edge is feathered? So that came off of that side because I can't take a full width pass. I mean, the board is wider than the plane blade. And this one, hard edge on my right, feathered on the inside. So that way you're able to make overlapping passes. There's no plane tracks. Check it real quick to make sure that it's flat. It's got a little bit of a hump, so I'm gonna take a pass right down the middle. And I could tell from that that I was high. The board is high. Take another one. Third time, now I don't pick up anything. That means I got rid of the bump and I'm now referencing on the two outside strips of the plane where there is no blade. So what I'll do now is take a pass out here, pass out here, and that should give me flat. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I planed up my milled and planed the inside face. Actually, I did both sides because I wanted to get rid of the snipe. So I took this down. This is going to be my through dovetail front that we will add the piece to. So this is 11 sixteenths. And I'm just trying to decide. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this will be top right. So the first thing I need to do is I need to have a reference edge. This is going to be the bottom. Now, if I run my fingers that way, it's smooth. If I run my fingers this way, I can feel resistance. So I'm under the assumption that the grain is running in the direction I'm planing. So I'm going to straighten this edge. Just moving the blade out a little. When I can hear I've got a full shaving, then I'll stop. Nice and smooth. Check it for straight. Bit of a bump in the middle. So we'll take pass out of the middle. Another one. Didn't, we'd started here and ended somewhere around here, and then we'll take one, possibly two, Two full passes. No hiccups. Okay, that'll work. Now, we gotta get these right. So this is the, this is out, remember I mark on the back. So top right, that fits in there like that. Top right, this is on the, marked on this side. So I'm gonna take them like this and set it in front. So I need to put these, make sure that's clean. Put these like so. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna keep this one close. The other one I'm gonna need to cut some off. I'm a little bit long. So take it like this. Make sure that that is flush. My bottom is my reference. So the final outcome is going to be dependent upon how accurate everything is. You know what? I'm not satisfied with this. I want to check and make sure that this is actually square. Ah, uh, it isn't. Okay. I'm a little bit high. I'm, I'm a little bit high here. I think I planed that way. So I need to pull my uh, pull up on my lateral adjustment lever, which will kick the plane blade out on the bottom. And pull that blade in. If you're wondering why I'm holding it up like this, so that I can see light, or up against the light. I need to kick that out a little bit more. Got to maintain straight too, so I've got to check that again. Ah, 
Ah, you dog. In case you don't know, if you continue to plane an edge, you will eventually end up with a convex surface. Okay, so we got it square, but we're no longer straight. So we'll come back in. I'm going to pull a little more blade in. Chunk in the middle. Extend it. Two full length passes. Check it for square. Still a little bit. Now, don't want to run out of material. Oh my goodness. This is the back. I thought I was working on the front. I don't think I ruined it. You know, if it weren't for a lot of bad luck, I wouldn't have any. Son of a gun. I wish I could hear some of you people that were screaming at me. This is the back. I thought I was working on the front. I thought I had lots of material. I still do. I'm not in trouble yet. No, that's about, but I'm, I'm right at the limit. That's, that's, oh wow. Okay. That is square. And that is straight. Yeah. I know I can't get a 1,000 shim in there, so I'm feeling pretty confident. I'll just verify it with you. I put a shim in there, I can't pull it out, so I know that's... And if I can, in fact, that I can slide that along, so that's best, better than the thou. Okay, let's try this again. So this is my back. Here's the way it goes, right? There's the drawer. Set it like that. I'm running my thumbs over here. Still a little bit. That feels great. Got to move it just slightly. That feels great. That feels great. Okay. There's a bit of a burr on there. Shoot. I got to get that off. Okay, there was just a, uh, that had been nicked. There was a bit of a burr on there and I didn't want that interfering. So I can reach out here. Remember, I've got this nice wide, no back bevel blade. And it allows me to keep that tight. Now when I get here, rather than go off the end where it would be too easy to, to lose my reference against the end of the board, and I'll just come back and go the other way. Now, keeping this in the same position, check again. By the way, to make it cut better, after you reference it, you just pick it up so that you're just dragging that trailing corner. That gives you your cut. Okay. Now we gotta go in and clean these up or make this fit. And I may need to use my I may need to use my uh, shim. I would expect I will in order to get this the same. I got a fair bit of material to remove. I'm gonna put my my uh, blade in here. 
just to bring that around to the front. Now it doesn't matter which face I have, which edge I have against this because I know this is not perfectly square. I'm not, I don't care about that. I need it to be perfectly lined up with that uh, back. Let's check and make sure that we're, no, that's off a little bit. Can't really explain that. And the reason I can tell that it's off is that that's slanted, whereas it should be straight or square to the end. Now, I'm just, before I, uh, no, that end. That looks better. This uh, this actually wasn't square. This is. So what I just said really doesn't count. I just got a bunch of material to get rid of first. I got to get some light on that because it's really hard to see. I don't know how far we're going to get tonight because I can't rush this. Okay, now I'm trying to determine if my plane is parallel to that mark. Get that shadow a little better. Could have made that knife mark a little deeper. Okay. No, I just got to keep going because I can't quite tell yet. If you're in close, you'll see that the fibers start to break. So that's the, the top little layer of fibers. Because the knife cut them, they start to crumble. And it really helps you tell when you're right on your line. Because when you're right on your line, that'll be sharp. This will be sharp right to the plane. And there won't be any of this little gap created by those little bits that are crumbling. Okay, so I can tell what I'm gonna have to do. I gotta pull this out a little bit. This is where I'll use the shim. I don't like, I hate taking those out because I can never get them. I suppose I can get them back, but it's not easy. So what I'm doing right now, I don't know if you, you probably can't see, I don't know if the camera can get that close and I'm looking at it under magnification. I'm trying to match the gap back here with the gap right there where I, I deepened that cut. Now you'll see these crumbly things are starting up here. Whereas these ones are almost already gone. That's how I can tell that it, I wasn't uh, perfectly lined up or I wasn't planing the edge parallel to the knife line. Ah. Good thing I have to take some off. I already went past that. Shoot. This 
Son of a gun. How much have I got? All right, I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna plane that off because that'll only screw me up and that actually went, look how deep that went. I thought I had plenty of chamfer on there, but I didn't. You see it? Mm -hmm. So actually, you know what I can do? Oh, table saw's not set up. How are we for time? We're at 30. Are we? Okay, you know what? I'm going to, uh, well, let me just. That's actually too much to try to take off with the plane. Um, we got the, we're changing over the table saw, not changing it, but we're just showing what we're doing. We're trying to make the shop more efficient. So I had an old interior door back there for an extension table just because I hadn't had time to do anything. But we had another, we had another table saw, which was our backup table saw. Got it for $300. Great thing about the, uh, the saw stop's fantastic, but if something on the electronics goes, you can sometimes be down for a few days. We were down for 10 days. So a good thing we still had this one because we could keep on working. And I thought, well, instead of having that thing taking up space on the floor, we move this in. Jake's just in there leveling the two. So that this will be this will be just our outfeed table. And if we ever have to, or if somebody's using that and somebody wants to use this one, we can use this side. So the, that's why I can't use it right now. So it's probably just as well. And it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to try to do these a little earlier. So tomorrow, uh, I'll, I'll take this a little bit farther. But I, I do want to show you the advantages of gang sawing, even though it's not my preferred. But I'll show you what I'll do to make it a little bit easier. And I'll, you know, I don't think you need to see any of the dovetails because we've already done it. But w tomorrow when we come back, I will, uh, I'll rip this off so we can get past those terrible tears that I just created. And then we'll finish this off so we get the two of these perfect. And then we'll just do like we did tonight, just little snippets here and there where I think it's something that needs to be reemphasized. Uh, I enjoy your comments. Wow, there's a lot of them. So we we uh, we try to between Jake and I, we try to read them. Um, don't forget Saturday night we're doing our live YouTube workshop at six o'clock Eastern, and it's going to be a question and answer, question and answer slash demonstration. We'll put out a video tomorrow that will give you some more information and how you can submit your questions. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.